Well, hello Amsterdam. I hope you enjoy your coffee break. Um, today I'm going to talk about accessibility and how it is important for you to tackle in 2020. Um, my name is Margot Gable, as you might have heard, and I'm French. I designed and built since 2015, and I'm not an accessibility expert. So watch me as I get really uncomfortable and accept my ignorance in front of this full room, and how I will share with you what we learned, learned so far at Build. We are built in Amsterdam. What do we do? We build digital flagship stores. How do we do that? By combining strategy, branding, and e-commerce. Sorry. Um, we aim to set the industry uh, benchmark, so it worked pretty well so far because it led to a lot of award-winning projects. Here are my boss accepting various awards around the world. Um, and now let me introduce you to our client, which is Moi. And Moi means nice in Dutch with an extra O. Um, and their philosophy is a life extraordinary. They've been uh, starting in 2001, by, uh, created by Marcel Wonder and Casper Wieser, and is a strong, of, uh, strong individual creating beautiful furniture, lightning, um, wall covering, and accessories. You might know from them the life-size horse lamp, which is quite recognizable, um, or maybe the random light uh, made by Birch and Pot. It's in a lot of hotels and restaurants uh, around the world. Uh, you might know their uh, flagship store in Amsterdam, but they also have other stores around the world. And now I'm going to talk about the one in New York, because this is where our story start. And it all started with a lawsuit. Moi got sued in the US because it's illegal to have an in inaccessible website. Um, only last year, there was more than 2,200 web accessibility lawsuits just in one year. And it's, um, you might have heard of the Beyonce.com website, but also uh, Domino's Pizza case, who was really famous. And some of our clients also get sued, uh, sued supply Adidas Reebok. And this is coming to you because in Europe it is now mandatory to have a digital accessi uh, digitally accessible website since June 2019. So if there is one thing I'm sure about is that you or your client might be the next one to get sued. So I'm going to talk about really shortly, I can reassure you, what is accessibility, why you need it and how we apply it to our project with Moi. So if I had to simplify it to one sentence, it would be that you have to ensure that your platform it can be used by anyone. And it's anyone, regardless of their physical disability, but also other type of disability. Um, it can be situational, or permanent, temporary. So for example, if you forget your glasses in the morning, this is a temporary disability, the same as just having a broken arm for a few months. Or if you like to eat sandwiches in your car while driving, then this is a situation disability. I don't recommend to do that, by the way. Um, if you try to look at your phone or on your laptop in, in the sunlight, then this is, again, a situation disability. So these are use cases you have to consider while designing. Um, I picked this quote from uh, F. Anderson, who's the head of accessibility team at Google, and she said, Accessibility is a basic human right. It benefits everyone. I think it sums it up pretty, pretty well. Um, now you might ask, why do I need it? Why do I need it for my client? It is pretty simple. Um, there is an estimated one billion people around the world with a recognized disability. So the math is quite simple here. Imagine that you could reach all these people. It's suddenly 15% more reach on your website. So instead of tweaking every little pixel or trying to yeah, increase your conversion, then if you make your website accessible, you just reach more users. It's that simple as this. So other benefits for making your website fully accessible, the list is quite long. I select a few one here. Yeah, well, you support inclusion. You have better Google ranking, but you also uh, encourage good coding practices. And it's future-proof in the end. Um, the best benefit is that you don't get a lawsuit. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you how we apply it to uh, our project and how did we start 
that was a bit scary, we had to go through this. These are the web content accessibility guidelines that you have to match. It's incredibly long, it's impossible to read. I tried. It's scary. So what we've done is that we had to seek for help, human help. We went to see the Dutch uh, Accessibility Institute. There is an equivalent in every European country, I guess. So if you need help making your website accessible, you have to meet some humans who can help you understand this huge list that we just saw and just make sense out of it. So we started working for more by making it, um, sorry, we think brand, not website. So what we've done is that we immerse ourselves into the more universe. So we start uh, reading all their catalogs, all their flyers and books. We went to Milano to meet their new product. Uh, we also touch and smell everything, looked at how their products are made, and we also test all their products in the store. So with all of this in mind, with all of this um, beautiful content, we came up with this overarching concept that would guide us through the, um, through the whole process. And we called it the multi-sensory shopping experience, meaning that um, any choices that we will make through, uh, through, the, um, through that project would be led through this idea. Um, now I'm going to show you how we applied it to our website in four really short points. So first is the look and feel. And what we usually do is that we seek for inspiration. And this is the inspiration in fully accessible website. It looks terrible. It looks really template-ish. We were a bit... Uh, disappointed while doing our research. So we decide that we have to be accessible and beautiful. We don't, do not want to end up with these kind of things. So good design starts with good typography. So we start making pairings with this beautiful um, Sans Bleu from uh, Swift typeface, maybe you know them, or the Tiempos from Clean Type. And we start testing them on different colors because Making something accessible is also about contrast. So we had to test everyone, every, each one of our colors. You can see they get a rating, so triple A. The numbers is the ratio. It always needs to be at least above 4.5, for example. So we test it on beige, on our specific black, or when we use it over typography, over, sorry, video and image, then it also needs to be above a certain level. Um, and to reach this, we use different tools, so uh, Figma Able plugin, I really recommend this one, or the SIPMAC app, which allows you to pick up um, colors all over your desktop. So it's also useful to try on your website live. Um, so with this tool, we start building a full accessible design system. Each one of these elements has been thoroughly tested. Um, all the colors have been tested and tested and tested I can't more emphasize on this. So everything is designed and coded in an accessible way. And with these building blocks, we made um, a modular uh, page system that the client can use and um, reorganize to build their, their own pages. So you have product highlights, quotes, stories. Um, and all put together, well, we have a nice website. Um, and each block can be fully customized, we also add animation layers to it, an animation that needs to be fully accessible. So as you can see, there is a few things moving, but they do not exceed five seconds. Um, they are not obstructing the text. Uh, they are not blinking for people who have epilepsy. So we always design everything with uh, accessibility in mind. Now I'm going to show you how we um, approach navigation. So what we've done is that we took these physical elements. This is an NFC chip that is on every product uh, of Moi. And you can scan it to, um, to prove the ownership. And what we've done is that we br brought it to a website directly from uh, the wireframe phase. So these are a beautiful wireframe. And you can see that if you go to the website, the final design, the button made it uh, so far. If you open the website now on your phone, you can see that uh, you can use it in different ways. Uh, we can move it around if you're left or right-handed. We were inspired by the iOS accessibility uh, menu options. If you don't want to use your fingers, you can use your voice. So that's why we made 
a prominent voice search. So if I say rabbit lamp or horse lamp to my computer or my phone, then this is what shows up. Um, if you don't want to use your voice, you can use your keyboard. So now, if I start pressing tab on our website, this is what happened. We designed specific focus states and hidden links, like the skip to content that you just saw, to accommodate keyboard users. So you can make custom ones. Here we have a dot in the menu, so it still looks nice. Or this dash, uh, dashed line, which highlight everything that is clickable on your website. Um, if we take a look at the content now, how we abort content at Build is quite special. We say that 80% of the design is the content. So it's even truer when you have to um, approach acce with accessibility in mind because this is a beautiful image, but if you forget your glasses this morning, this is what you might see. So if you use your screen reader, every image that is uploaded on the Moi website is has an invisible text called alt text, and your screen reader will read it to you. And the sound is not working. Imagine your screen reader just reading this to you. Um, and the products are the hero at Moi, so we really wanted to give them a stage. So this is, for example, the collection page, and we allow the client to update, dif update. upload different kind of sequences so you can play, turn the lamps on, drag the telescopic lamps. So it, it is accessible, but it's still playful. Like this can be used through your keyboard, for example. Um, if we go to the detail page, we also wanted a full visual experience, still fully keyboard navigable, um, with large text so you don't have to zoom in to 100%. All our videos have uh, specific uh, controls as well. Um, so we really wanted a visual but pl playful experience here, and I'm going to show you later how this works. But for, um, yeah, for content-wise, we always hand over to the client a big uh, brand guideline document, and that's where we explain to them how to enter alt text, how to use our fonts uh, correctly, how to use the colors correctly, and everything to make sure that whatever is uploaded on our website is fully accessible and also looks nice. So let's take a look at our buying process now. Um, we wanted still an immersive experience, still with accessibility in mind, so that's why we can... Oh, I'm so sorry, the, the sound is not working now. Imagine wood cracking. <laughs> It's, it, it's really nice. Um, so yeah, if you, if you go on a category page, you have a bit of an introduction, intro, introduction to the world of Moi. Um, imagine a violin playing now. <laughs> so they also play a bit with music, so it's not only about, um, about just the sounds the products make. Um, we also wanted to use a human language, so if you use the filter function and use a screen reader and select different kind of uh, filters, your screen reader will read it as a real sentence. It will sound like black suspension lamp made by birch and pot. It is just a bit, it's a bit more human language. Now, if we take a look at our buying process, again, fully keyboard, uh, keyboard navigable, with different kind of um, like hover states and every, everything is also, uh, sorry, have, diff have the right contrast. We really wanted to have a focus, uh, like buying experience to avoid distraction and so that it stays, you stay focused on your screen. Um, so this is the whole, uh, whole technology behind it. I'm not going to go in, uh, in full, full details because I'm a mayor designer. Uh, but if you want to have more information about how it's made under the hood, then you can send us your question through Twitter or uh, Instagram. So um, now it's time to take some notes. So my f the first point I want to make is that you have to consider accessibility from the start. You have to treat web accessibility as a necessity. 
not a feature. So your conversion will, well, increase by itself if you, um, if you consider everyone as a user. Um, and my second point, which is really important, is that you have to get human advisors. I couldn't emphasize more on that one, um, because like, they really help us perform uh, manual audits, but also explain to us how how it, how it, um, how to apply every criteria. And last one is that you have to set the new industry benchmark. So accessibility is an excuse to actually have fun and try new technology, a new way to interact uh, with your users. You can really experiment with new tools, and it is challenging, but it's worth. Um, we should, we should all try to make our website accessible. Um, and now, I want to invite you to follow us on our social if you want to know a bit more about us or see how silly we are. And on Friday, I would like you to join us for some drinks. Thank you for listening.